Hello and welcome to D2C Revolution by Exchange for Media. You will be surprised to know who are in con conversation with today. We have with us Priyanka Gill, group co-founder of the Good Glam Group. Welcome Priyanka, how are you doing? Or I, I, as I say, PG always, <laughs> our favorite. <laughs> no, it's fantastic to be here and welcome to the Good Glam Group Delhi office. Yes, I have seen the Rajasthan and this seems like heaven. I'm loving it. <laughs> When it came to establishing establishing such a big brand like Good Clang Group, uh, what were the challenges that you faced in the beginning of the years, and how did you tackle those? The Good Clang Group is interesting because while we are a that brand at the corporate level, we also have many other brands, be it uh, My Glam, Serona, Organic Harvest, Saint Botanica, uh, Mom's Co, right, which are our uh, DTC brands that we run. But then we also run brands on the media side: Popex, yeah. Scoop, Popex, Smarani, Tweak. And then we have the Good Creator Co, which is uh, one of the largest influencer uh, brands out there. So it's interesting how we woven together uh, a bunch of very, very well-known brands, and then they all come under the Good Gram, uh, Group umbrella. You asked me about the challenges of doing that. I think the first most important thing is we recognize that each brand, each platform has to stand on its own, right? right. At that time, all the good uh, principles for brand building come into play. Mm. Uh, what is the brand voice? What does the brand stand for? What are the brand values? Who is the brand addressing? What uh, need gap is it solving? How is the brand talking to consumers? Right. So that gets solved at an individual brand level. Yeah. And then when we aggregate it and when we build the Good Glam Group story together, how do all these brands tie in? Right. Yeah. You have the good brands co where our beauty and personal care brands sit. You have the good media co where our media brands sit. You have the good creative co where influencer brands sit. And then of course you have good community, which basically kind of ends up being this wonderful thread that ties all of it together. Right. So I think we've had a lot of fun over the past. We just turned two this year, by the way. I think oh. we turned two yesterday. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so the Good Lamb Group is two now. Yeah. So we've had a lot of fun over the past uh, two years uh, putting all of this together. And... Uh, I think it's been a privilege to uh, be uh, to be the co-founder of uh, the Good Lamb Group because I don't know anywhere else where you're able to raise two hundred and twenty million dollars in a year and then yeah. go out and acquire eleven companies in a year and then aggregate those eleven companies to form a single brand that is uh, the Good Lamb Group. Yeah. So it's been a real privilege and uh, just to see it all happen. Talking about money, now that you've mentioned. Uh, Speaking of numbers, now that you've mentioned, uh, I saw that last year the group went under some losses, but then there was also very aggressive acquisition happening around. So uh, how did that happen? How did you manage that? What was the plan behind that? All the aggressive acquisition happening all around. So look, honestly, last year, I think we were a lot less aggressive than the year before that in terms of acquisitions, etc. Yeah. Right? And our acquisitions are always very, very strategic. Hmm. So uh, we have this matrix, if you will, of the types of brands we'd like to build for the types of consumers we'd like to reach. Okay. And if we find a brand that basically fulfills a gap in that matrix, that's when we go and acquire. Hmm. So uh, there's a lot of thought that goes behind when we uh, acquire a brand. So I think it's uh, our strategy is now well known and we've of course spoken to you guys many times about it now. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, it's basically uh, uh, acquisitions happen on a, a need gap basis. Yeah. And there has to be a really good fit between the founder, uh, the vision that the founding team has and how does that align with our vision here at the Good Lamb Group. Yeah. And also what is that uh, special multiplier that the Good Lamb Group ecosystem mm -hmm. can add to the story of the brand that we're acquiring. Mm -hmm. So once that, that's a lot of criteria to fulfill, by the way. So once all of those things fall into place, that is when we actually go and acquire. So yes. I think we've uh, frankly done a, one of the best jobs that I've seen maybe even uh, globally. I don't know if there's another story where 10, 12 companies have come together and all those 10, 12 companies yeah. are still there and yeah. are doing really well. All the brands that we've acquired have grown over 200%, mm. right? Which wow. is a fantastic uh, track record uh, to build, especially at our scale. Yeah. Definitely. And I feel that uh, one thing which really impresses me personally about this brand is that every segment of your brand caters to a different target market and they really get deep into it. So if there's mom's core, there's baby chakra, there's Saint botanica, they just cut through the market and reach the consumer's problems, which is really nice. It's personally impresses me a lot. But the one thing that really comes to my mind is 
how do you maintain a seamless consumer experience all across channels because uh, the age group that you cater to the product that you offer everywhere it's very different and it's not easy to maintain that kind of a uniformity all around see honestly at a brand level there is a high degree of uniformity that gets maintained across channels hmm. so when say a my glam product is being sold and be it uh, it's been sold offline it's yeah. been sold through the physical stores or it's being sold through marketplaces or it's being sold through our own dtc uh, platform that we have for my glam there the continuity of uh, communication is always maintained and hmm. that's the secret to building a brand so regardless of the channel you need to tell the same story yeah uh while uh, the communication for myglam might be diametrically different from what we say for sirona mm. right but again within the channels for sirona the brand we will maintain the same tone of voice and the same communication and uh, it need not be the same that we might do for another brand as such right so uh we actually don't see a confusion that you're kind of alluding to because mm. for each brand voice tone message uh, reason to exist reason to believe all of those are very well defined and all channels basically follow the same playbook and Great. that need not be the same for all the other brands you might have in the portfolio makes sense quite makes sense uh also congratulations recently dia mirza invested in baby chakra right uh i would love to know what does she bring to the table what was that uh, decision all about and how did it work out so you know i think uh and you would have seen it's a pattern that uh, i think we've successfully developed and followed now yeah uh, being able to partner with uh celebrities who have a very engaged social media following and not just bring them on board as say a brand ambassador that everyone else can do but, but get them in as a strategic partner for us for our growth journey at the good lamb group because they genuinely believe in what we are doing they yeah. believe in what we will do in the future and they want to really partner with us mm -hmm. right so we've done that many times now of course starting with manish malhotra who's luxury makeup we i mean it's our brand then you have shraddha kapoor yeah. right then of course you have twinkle her uh, tweak uh, her content platform twinkle is for what and tweak oh is it yeah, okay yeah so uh, her content platform is now is okay. part of uh, the good media co and the good lamb group we recently announced uh, a jv with akshay kumar again along the same lines mm. uh, so we, oh, every time we've gotten brand ambassador beat karina kapoor be twinkle khanna for tweak uh, akshay kumar who's jv we just announced so all these celebrities who are partners with us have also become investors in the good lamb group along the same lines they are of course aligns beautifully with the ethos of baby chakra yeah. she herself is a mother she believes in the brand values that baby chakra uh, really strongly positions itself in be it uh, Uh, telling mothers to read the label under the label paro campaign mm -hmm. uh, standing for clean products that are actually good for uh, the baby or for the mother yeah and uh, so yeah so she's basically come on board as our investor and uh, through her we want to continue to amplify the message that baby chakra so beautifully uh, puts forward and we really welcome her into the good lamb group family amazing uh, now that you mentioned the word clean uh, i really wonder that nowadays this term specifically clean uh, authentic vegan gluten bahut zyada overused and it's like every overexposed word here so how do you feel about it that uh, when it comes to differentiating your product i know as a brand it came well ahead of time all the other brands are using this word now but as a new user when i open the browser and i see 10 brands in front of me with this terminology how will i differentiate who's making a fool of me and who's not you know that's actually uh, the campaign that we ran for one of our brands which is organic harvest okay so where the entire contention was ki do boon nimbu dalne se aapka brand natural nahi hota yeah. and the idea is to actually read what's inside the product to yeah. see the concentration of the products and organic is better than natural right yeah. so i think you're right uh, there's uh, of course an over usage of uh, the fad words out there um and as a consumer all of us need to be be really aware of is it lip service or does the brand really believe in um, right in those words my glam for example has been a uh, peta certified has been a uh, clean in the truest sense for the longest time right yeah. so we have uh, been kind of that's been uh, the uh, the story for as long as i at least remember my glam mm. similarly where organic harvest is concerned our entire a uh, uh, reason to believe is the fact that's actually american certified organic right which not too many uh, brands can lay claim to probably are one of the the only brands uh, 
uh, for makeup skin care for skin care and our makeup in the country that can say that so yeah. the idea is the idf certification is important so when we say that we are cruelty free we just don't say we are cruelty free mm. we say we are peta certified right yeah. it's not just us saying it but it's being said by a very well known certifying agency mm. when organic harvest says that it is organic it's again not just the brand claiming it but it's actually american certified organic right which is again one of the highest levels of of certification that you can get similarly for mom square as well right yeah. so when they were certified if i remember correctly it was a, it was a swiss laboratory that certified them yeah. to be really clean so we take these labels very seriously uh and as a consumer i think as consumers too i think we should really know what we're buying into mm. and investigate a little bit more so if a brand says that they're natural it's not just by putting two drops of lemon and calling it natural yeah. but like organic harvest is actually certified by uh, with an american certification saying that that they're actually organic and not just natural right so it's yeah i think um, but the really interesting reason why all of this is the consumer in india she's a very very well aware and a very demanding consumer so she literally is expecting products that not only deliver value yeah but they're actually good for her as well so all of these words have become buzzwords or fad words because the consumer is demanding them hmm. which i think is a great step because once the consumer demands something it really uh, makes all brands up the ante and deliver a better product so the consumer today she is no different from uh, a consumer who might be sitting in the suburbs of uh, new york in brooklyn say or if she's sitting in jabalpur her mm -hmm. demands because of social media are actually the same which i think is a great leveler and it's forcing all brands to become better because of that okay so we've done a lot of brand talk let's move to the consumer side in the past one year what are some of the consumer behavior shifts that you've noticed so you know um the consumer is uh, an ever evolving uh, set of folks for us right and uh, some very interesting shifts have been happening uh, so one is uh, there are two segments doing extremely well one is the high end luxury segment and the other is the value segment so in a way we almost seeing a polarizing towards those two ends so the middle of the group consumer that is slightly kind of in a way dissolving into either of the two so that's one uh, the second thing is uh, we are seeing a big shift from tier 1 to tier 3 customers as well especially at the good lamb group we've actually seen quite a significant shift towards how much we've penetrated well into the tier 3 tier 2 tier 3 segment too hmm. so it's uh, consumer demand is not just existing in the big metros and the big cities uh, but even for online dtc brands like ours right it's actually kind of extending deep into uh, the hinterlands of the country too so that's and we've been speak, uh, talking about that for a while but we actually seeing it physically kind of take place now and uh, it's great to see our products kind of because we've been serving all the pin codes for a while it's really good to see our products basically kind of going all the way um, across and then the third thing as i said is uh, how aware the customer is and how demanding the customer is so she pretty much wants everything she wants value she wants a great product she wants something that stays she wants it to look interesting she wants it to have a very distinct story and uh, this idea of personalization is very very important so at the goodlam group we've always believed in co-creating with our user so really listening deeply to what the customer is saying mm -hmm. and then building products in response to what we hear so we've been uh, kind of uh, co-creating with our customer for a while and of course you'll start seeing some very interesting renditions of that uh, now come forward yeah uh, so the customer wants to believe in the brand story and she wants to be part of that story and she's really looking for authenticity right yeah. so it's hard right it kind of yeah. uh, really pushes uh, the bar for what we need to perform as a brand but that's also what makes it so much more fun and challenging Wow, love the last line. <laughs> But also coming to uh, your IPO plans, I'm. I think you people are planning for the same, right? And what are some of the things that you want to keep in mind before you go all all out and all public? So look, and of course, uh, we've all we've publicly stated that listing in the public markets is what our uh, our ultimate ambition is, and that's still what we're building towards. Um, being public market ready is now, thankfully, a well defined uh, state of affairs. we've seen so many uh, of our uh, other startups come to market mm -hmm. we've seen what they've done well we've seen where uh, we can learn from them too so yeah i think it's exciting times and uh, i think next year is going to be very interesting uh, our general elections are going to happen so i think we can expect some level of buoyancy come back to the market because of that 
And at the Good Climb Group, we are uh, pretty much it's eyes on goals, and the listing in the next few years is what we are looking at. Great, sounds good. Uh, coming towards the end, just keeping it simple for you, upcoming festive season plans. This is festive OND is of course one of the big uh, parts of the year for us, and plans for OND start well way before, of course, the season hits. Right. Um, we are doubling down on our uh, collaborations with our celebrities. And you will hear of some very interesting launches that are going to come out of that. I can't uh, mention any more than that right See, now. Say it. I know, but I really can't. I wish I can. But you, you, you'll be one of the first to know when we actually release uh, the news for okay. that. Uh, some, I mean, one of them I'm really particularly really pleased about. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, apart from that, uh, we are uh, uh, really kind of playing down into our omni-channel uh, strategy, hmm. where we're looking at uh, physical retail, where we're looking at marketplaces, and of course our DTC, and uh, tying campaigns that sit kind of seamlessly across all our channels of sale. Hmm. So all of that is uh, basically happening right now. And yeah, no, I think uh, fingers crossed, uh, this OND should kind of really smash uh, how well we did in last OND, <laughs> and uh, may it be a good one for all of us. Definitely. Last question. One tip that you uh, wish you would have known as a younger entrepreneur and all other young entrepreneurs should know. I wish at that time I knew that it is a marathon and not a sprint. Because I think uh, that hyper enthusiasm that you have as a young entrepreneur, your words, not mine, uh, it's very exhausting. Yeah. And uh, just pacing yourself and uh, self-care again is a buzzword but again that's a really important word and taking care of yourself right so i always say that uh, it's uh, it, you look at it in three parts of the whole one is the, your physical readiness mm -hmm. are you eating well are you working out are you sleeping well as entrepreneurs often those things just go out of the window and uh, once those uh, aspects of your health are not optimized you begin to see a negative impact on all other kind of parts of the yeah. uh, the journey that you're on. Uh, the second is your uh, kind of uh, mental wellness, right? Uh, are you meditating? What are you doing to calm down? Are you taking time off? In the early stages, you really completely kind of forget to uh, to actually do that. Yeah. And then the third part is uh, your social part of uh, life, right? I remember when I started out, I think my social life was negative, not even zero. And uh, luckily, my friends stood by me and my family stood <laughs> by me. I, mean, I would not have stood by me at that point. But I literally had no time to do anything except work. Yeah. And that again has a detrimental effect on uh, how you're able to perform. So yeah, so had I known early on, I try and balance all parts, all, all three parts of kind, of kind of the whole, just so that you can be a better uh, founder, uh, a better team member, yeah. a better leader and literally lead by example. So I think I, do, I lost count the number of times I physically burnt out. So I think we should try and minimize that as much as we can. Wow, amazing advice. I think that also applies for me. Even if I'm not an entrepreneur, I'm still working all the time and I need to listen to this. I'll replay this part of the clip again and again for myself to take care of myself. I'll do the same too because I can, <laughs> I can dish it. It's very hard to execute. I know, I know. I think it is the right time to wrap up this discussion. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. This is Chahinit Kaur CK and Priyanka Gil PG wrapping up for you. See you in the next episode very soon. <laughs> Thank you.